We are in my grow room, which is in Baltimore, in the Bolton Hill neighborhood. So it's 24 feet by 22 or 24 feet. I can't remember the actual dimensions. I get in trouble every time I mention this, but it's probably between 200 and 300 orchids, I would imagine. I haven't counted in a while. Back in undergrad, I uh, took a job in a country called Palau, which is in Micronesia. And I would walk with some of the local women, the Palauan women. And what they would do is they would collect orchids on these runs through the jungle. And they would bring them back to their house to bloom them out, keep them as plants, house plants. They gave me one and I automatically killed it. So I was decided that when I got back to the States, that was something that I was going to pursue. And it kind of just planted a seed in my head. A couple years after that, one of my friends had uh, a mother who had a friend that was leaving town and she had inherited 20 orchids and asked me if I wanted any. So I took as many as I could and I started to fill up my windows and then I bloomed my first one and that's really where the hook kind of got me and that's how I got started. I think a lot of Earth science folks in general really do have a passion for plants and animals and stewardship of the earth and I think that's just expressed a little bit in in people's hobbies whether they're you know into cacti and growing them gardening um, conservation for me it's been orchids and I spend probably an hour in here every day some days more if I can get the time um, it's mostly in the evenings but what uh, is important for orchids and keeping them alive are a couple things. Uh, air movement is one. You can hear the fans. They're always constantly going 24-7. The light source is another thing that's important. And watering is important, too, and some fertilizer. When my wife and I decided to buy a house, I really wanted a dedicated space to grow orchids. You know, I've always had them either in my bedroom or on windowsills or in like a small corner of the basement, but nothing that was really like a greenhouse. Unfortunately, obtaining a greenhouse nowadays is a very expensive process and uh, keeping it up is also expensive with all the heating costs. So one of the options is to uh, have a grow room or a light garden. And we decided that we take some of the funds from selling our houses in D.C. and moving to Baltimore and invest in a small room. This is about 24 by 24 feet. Basically what we did was we broke out the concrete, put in drains. One of the most important things about growing orchids is not having to move them and just moving the water. Put in the drains to funnel the water, sealing the ceiling so that a lot of the humidity is trapped in here and having good air ventilation, having some windows so that you can exchange the air. Everything else I put together, either constructed or purchased. But the process itself took a couple months, and uh, but it was fun, you know, and, it, and it's a rewarding space for me because I use it daily. I'm always rotating through orchids, so I will bloom something a few times, and then when I find something else that I'm more interested in, I kind of just decide, you know, I've had these for years, it's time to share these with others. So then I will either donate them to the society or put them up for sale online or uh, give them to somebody as a gift. So my favorite orchid has been uh, Phragmopedium kovakii. It's an intriguing orchid because it was only discovered in 2002. What's special about this orchid is it is about the size of your face. And it's a slipper orchid and it's bright purple. And it was only discovered in 2002. And so how it escaped humans for that long is, uh, is amazing. But also it's one of the hardest ones to bloom. So it took me years to figure out how to bloom one. And uh, it still is my, my favorite orchid. They're not in bloom right now, but they'll start blooming in the, in the winter. It's true, there's a lot of addiction, and I don't know why, I think people just fall in love with the flower. It's either the flower or the process of growing and nurturing something and, and being rewarded when you, when you bloom something out. When it came to the US, I think after World War II, a lot of the um, orchids that were collected in the US were only for the very well-off, the established, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, they had huge collections. 
and it wasn't really a hobby that was accessible to the, to the normal person. And so a lot of that allure, I think, comes from these things being difficult to grow and hard to access. And I think that attracts a lot of people. For me, it kind of is, it reminds me of the, my time on the island a little bit. Um, and that connection with nature and being somewhere tropical. But it also uh, brings me a sense of uh, calm, like one would find if they garden, you know, it's kind of a peaceful thing to come and take care of and nurture this plant. But then you're also rewarded, you know, you, you, you do this for long enough and you jump this orchid through all the right hoops, you reward with some amazing flower. and. Uh, it's gratifying. It's almost like overcoming this obstacle and it just really helps to, uh, I don't know, gives you a sense of peace.